edition of Boxing For Real. I'm your host, Don Omega, Iron Truth with me. We've got some big, big news coming up. That's why we've been away for a little while. We'll get to that later on. Don't worry about that. We've also got things in the works still to come that we'll talk about later. We haven't forgotten you. We've just been busy with that kind of stuff. So anyhow, let's get to a lot of stuff yeah. that we've missed in the <laughs> past little while. Okay. First, last weekend, or the weekend before, depending when I get this up, um, Vernon Forrest versus Ike Corte. What a fight that was. Yeah, uh, they got the decision wrong. Definitely. Um, Corte clearly won this fight, threw less, landed more in every way, power punches, jabs, everything. Uh, clearly beat Forrest. Maybe Forrest won about three rounds. Um, just horrible decision. Uh, there's nothing else to really say about it. So. I Yeah, I had it scored. My final scorecard due to the um, point deduction against Forrest was 97-92. Yeah. It would have been 97-93, and when they were reading those scores, it just sounded like it had to be For Corte. Corte that yeah. they were doing, especially 95-94. It sounded yeah. like they had it a draw, and yeah. because of the point deduction... It was for Corte, of course. Yeah, the but... two judges that had it that way, the one judge that had it um, in favor of Forrest yeah. is absolutely ridiculous. Uh, they had it in favor of Forrest, 98 to 92, so 97, 92 with the point deduction. All three of the judges were ridiculous yeah. in my view absolutely. for this decision. I think they could do a rematch. Yeah, they should. I mean, uh, Forrest will it give it a... to him. I mean, it's not Forrest's fault that the judges are idiots. I mean, of course he's going to take the win. Anybody would. But, you know, I don't blame him, just as long as he gives Corte a rematch. He said he'd be open to that, so hopefully Absolutely. that happens. In a 12-rounder this yeah, time. Yeah, I don't get that either. But anyway, on the undercard, Kasim Uma took on Saku Powell, dominated him over 10 rounds. I expected a little more from Powell. Uh, I didn't think he would win or anything, but I did expect a little bit more. I never saw the, um, I never saw some urgency from him to win the fight or anything and Uma just controlled him and I, and I credit Uma for that more than Powell not doing anything but anyway Uma put on a typical performance and let his hands Shut go the whole fight yeah definitely. Shut him out and I didn't see I couldn't find a round on my card I, I added a shutout for yeah. him. You could have maybe out. given Powell two rounds possibly at the most uh, don't know but I mean you know Clear Maybe win so, for Uma. Even yeah, so, even it wouldn't so. have mattered. It was dominating, yeah, like you said. Definitely. And Uma just has too much of a work rate for Saku Powell, it looks yeah. like. Too high of a work rate and accurate. And it's over, It's hard to, for anyone to overcome whenever someone's throwing 100 plus punches per round at you yeah. and landing a lot of them. Yeah, uh, landing a lot more of them than some of these other volume punchers out there. Yeah, a lot of people just throw to be throwing and don't land. This guy actually lands, so yep. you know that's a and difference. Keep an eye on him. He'll obviously be going places. Uh, if for some reason Forrest doesn't fight Corte, yep. it'd be great if Uma fought Forrest or Corte. Yeah, definitely. Everyone in, in the fans' eyes, everyone knows Corte won the fight. Yep. So if they have. Uma versus Corte, fine. That's fine. And then on paper, Forrest got the win, so um, in that sense, I guess both of them are kind of winners. No one went away a total loser in that fight. No. But so, what's no, Uma's, Uma's in line for some big fights. Corey Spinks is out there at 154. I think that's a fight that should be made, really. That would be an interesting fight to see. So, also, yeah. over in Japan, Koki Kamita. He won the WBA Junior Flyweight title from Juan Lan Data, Data, whatever, Juan Data, I'm going to say. Um, Lan Data. Anyhow, it was supposedly a controversial decision. I've heard mixed, re I've heard mixed reports. I haven't actually seen the fight yet. Uh, trying to get my hands on it. Will soon, hopefully. But anyhow, Koki Kamita. Regardless if it was controversial or not, right now he is the WBA Junior Flyweight Champion. And only, uh, what, 12 fights now, right? Yeah, 12th yeah. fight, and um, that's quite young. Yeah. He's very popular in Japan. This was a very highly rated Japanese match. Um, yeah, over 50% uh, for him. Over 50 of the Japanese Population audience. Yeah. Of the TV audience yeah. watching TV was watching this yeah, fight. So that's... And that's unbelievable for anything. <laughs> so, yeah. congratulations on your win, tainted or not. 
Yeah. And we'll have to see where you go from there. Also, Rafael Marquez and Silence Mabuza fought. In a rematch. Um, More of the same. It, yeah. it was still a pretty one-sided affair. Silence, Mo Silence proved to be tougher this time and like held on longer. Yeah. He was surviving, basically. It took him nine rounds this time, a little longer, but still a dominating performance from Marquez. This guy beats anybody from 122 and down, I believe, and he is going to 122 now. That was his last fight at Bantamweight. So. And on the upper undercard, as I'm calling it, uh, Juan Manuel Marquez, the brother of Rafael, he fought a guy named Turdsack. Uh, yeah, and this guy kind of proved to be just that. He was one big Turdsack. And... <laughs> Yep, Marquez went out and beat the hell, beat the shit out of him, yeah. literally. Yeah. yeah, and it was a good performance for Marquez, but I mean, and going we would think so. Contrary to what him. you would think, Turdsack did not have uh, brown gloves. Yeah, <laughs> I thought he would. Yeah, he That's... had white gloves, but uh, anyway, a good win for both Marquez brothers. Um, hopefully, Juan Manuel Marquez will grow some balls and step up to fight somebody. If he pulled out last year against Pacquiao after he really lost to him. We it all took know he less lost. than $50,000 yeah. to fight Chris, Chris John. John. Yeah, and lost to him also. Okay, also we had a fight that we had to listen to on Spanish radio. He doesn't speak any Spanish. No. <laughs> I don't really, I wouldn't say I speak Spanish because I sound like an idiot speaking it. But I do understand some Spanish phrases and such. And anyhow, Edwin Valero versus Mosquera. Um, exciting fight, according to the commentators. You could tell that. You didn't have to speak Spanish to know that. <laughs> and the Panamanian lost. Edwin Valero won. It sounded like a back and forth battle. I understand Valero got, dropped. Um, got knocked down. Yeah, in the he, third round. He actually knocked this mascara down also and twice in the first round so it, almost had that first round knocked the way out it again. read the way it read and the way it sounded on the radio it read like a fight of the year yeah. type fight definitely who knows we didn't see it trying to get a hold of that one too and if we do we'll tell you about it yeah uh, another gr good win great win for valero took this is his longest fight, of course, by, by far, because he had only been to the second round before this. this. Is, he's now 20-0, and 0, all knockouts all knockout. still. And how old is he? Uh, he's not too old. 24 yeah, something or something like that. in there. Still young, already a champ, went to the guy's hometown and knocked him out. So that's very impressive. So hopefully we get to see him again sometime. Absolutely. <laughs> also, um, over the course of the weekend, we had Andre Berto. Yeah, fighting. that was on the uh, on the uh, Corte Forest yeah. undercard. Yeah, off TV. Yeah, off TV. Unfortunately, again, and uh, he got a first round knockout. Didn't Not see much it. to say there. Yeah. Just good another win for him. Upcoming win. So, also, yeah. Jadon Covington yeah. got a win against Carl Daniels. Yeah. Um, in a six round fight. This one also I thought was going to be an eight round fight. That whole card. At least, that, yeah. that whole card. Uh, it seemed like the fights were going to be longer and... They were two them, rounds shorter yeah. than what they should have been, all of them, for I some didn't. reason. I don't get that, but anyway, a good win for Codrington against a tough veteran in Carl Daniels. So. And Carl Daniels, uh, you're, beyond, you're beyond gatekeeper now. <laughs> yeah, definitely. It's uh, time to shut that gate and get out of boxing. Yeah. Okay, also, we had Jose Miguel Cotto. Yeah. Fighting. Uh, he got a 10th round knockout over Yvonne Hernandez, not the Yvonne Hernandez you're familiar with. Nope. Uh, guy with a very similar record, same name, but anyway, uh, Cotto put on a good performance and got him out of there in the very last round. So. Good run, good way to come back after, yep, after the Diaz loss. Yeah. Loss, the dominating loss to Diaz. This is a good step back to um, start coming back. Yeah. And he's also, still got time. And he's still got his career ahead of him. Also, Anthony Peterson fought. Uh, spectacular. Yeah, again. <laughs> I mean, yeah, sure, his opponent wasn't great. He's a prospect still. Yeah. And he came out and did what he was supposed to do in spectacular fashion. Absolutely. Two rounds. Uh, this guy, he puts everything into his punches. Uh, you can just tell he throws them. He throws them from quite a ways back, but they don't come off as a wide punch at all still. He, he still keeps them in line, 
and he has very good accuracy with them, even though he brings his hands back quite a bit when he does throw. But another great performance. Uh, definitely keep your eyes on him. So. And just keeping up with the um, with the Henry Buchanan tournament. That's what I'm. We're calling it. It's the Showbox Super Middleweight Prospect Tournament. Yeah. It. Uh, we had Anthony Henshaw over Esteban Camus. Take that for what it's worth. These guys don't really no, much matter. Although Henshaw looked. Somewhat impressive. He looked impressive. He looked like he had some skill. He yeah. looked like he had some quote unquote game or whatever you want to call it. We'll see what happens. I'll expect him to beat Buchanan. No, that, it will probably he, be him against Buchanan in the finals, actually, I would that, think. From what I saw, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I would, would think, think so. so. Mm -hmm. And also, uh, the substitute, the men stepped in. He beat. Jose Luis Herrera, his name is LaFerro Bunting. <laughs> um, this is four days notice he took this fight. I forgot the guy's name who he stepped in for. Um, if you care to know, I don't know why. But <laughs> you can you can look on Showtime probably. Yeah, that speaks something about the tournament to say how and good it is. A so. four day sub came in and beat one of the guys, participants. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And this participant was obviously supposed to beat this sub the sub came in, he beat the hell out of him. Yeah. Fifth round knockout. Knocked him out. So Yeah, and I don't expect him to continue. It'd be an amazing thing if he did continue. And I, I would be mad if he won the whole thing. Yeah. But I don't see that in any yeah, No way. At so. least the next the next round he won't be a late sub. He knows he'll be in the next round, so yeah. he'll lose. <laughs> so anyhow, that's going to be this show for right now. Sorry we've been away for so long, getting a little behind. Yeah. But there's a reason for it, and you'll see why. Yeah. Any updates for watching, remember to check us out. Um, remember to email us at gmail.com.